Whenever I have an opportunity uh, to get an older game in shrink wrap, uh, I always like to do a video unboxing of it because, uh, you know, when you think about it, um, some game from 25 or 30 years ago is unlikely to uh, have um, any coverage of somebody opening a game like that for the first time. And uh, eventually, there won't be any such opportunities to do that. Uh, all those games that were ever published uh, will be will have been opened, and there will be no more uh, unopened games to discover. So, just kind of a fun thing I like to do. Um, I don't have, I don't get too many of these. In fact, the only other one that I've gotten uh, that was this old that was in shrink wrap uh, was a copy of Hitler's War that was from '83. I think, as you can see here, this is a uh, Rebel Sabers um, from TSR from 1986 so uh, and you know of course I have no way of knowing that this is the original shrink wrap on here but I will say it's kind of yellowed with age so that's uh, an encouraging sign um, so we'll crack it open and take a look um, if contents have been obviously gone through then we'll know oh, this wasn't the original shrink wrap but uh, this is from the TSR era of SPI. Now this particular game uh, designed by Richard Berg. Oh, right there. Richard H. Berg designer. Even in 86 he was still uh, already a well-known designer. Probably had I don't know, by 86 he may have even had uh, half his repertoire under his belt by that point. I don't know. Um, but was well-known at the time. Um, he'd done uh, Terrible Swift Sword Campaign for North Africa, um, some of the classic monsters from the old SPI era. Um, and so I know TSR had done reprints of his Terrible Swift Sword. And uh, this is actually, this uh, recreates specifically cavalry battles from the Civil War. And uh, can actually be married up with the maps from Terrible Swift Sword, at least the TSR printing of Terrible Swift Sword. So um, that might be something interesting. Uh, as hideous as the maps um, from the TSR print of Terrible Swift Sword are, uh, it might be kind of cool to uh, get a copy of it. That's, it's fairly cheap compared to the old SPI version. Um, so get a copy of it and actually uh, add these cavalry maps to that game. So let's take a look in the box. Got your rules here. Um, <laughs> this is an interesting thing about the TSR era rules. Um, they all had these black covers on them, like this, this dark ink. Uh, all the ones that I've seen, anyway, have been that way. Uh, table of contents right there on the cover in sort of a weird layout. Um, who did the development on this? Ms. Berg is the designer development. Well, there's a number of names on there. I don't, I don't recognize Richard Britton. Richard Berg, obviously. Um, well, anyway, so here's the here's the rules. Looks totally unused. Fairly thick, or feels thick, but yeah, it's it's a forty page rule book. Counter manifest in the back. And, uh, here's the the aforementioned terrible Swiss sword rebel sabers. Uh, adaptation. Oh, charts and tables in the middle of the rule book. I'm going to guess that these are not reproduced on cards inside the box, but we shall see. So I don't really relish the thought of popping those out of this book. Counter sheets. This was a common thing in these older games that you'd get a um, these they see it's almost like sort of half size counter sheets here or half length counter sheets, but then they're like uh, this fold over board um, that you fold out, and of course um, you know, these aren't I've heard complaints about TSR's uh, glossy counters from the from their uh, SPI imprints. Um, 
These don't appear very glossy. They're sort of a matte finish. Um, not quite the the finish of the old SPI counters. There's a slight sort of slickness there, but not quite the shiny type of uh, counters you see, you know, from GMT and MMP today. Uh, unfortunately, as you can see, side mounted. There's really no good way to trim side mounted counters. You're always going to have a little a little nub sticking out or if you try and cut it off you'll end up with kind of a divot out of the side of the counter so um, really just horrible I'm so glad that uh, publishers don't do these side mounted counters anymore um, so fairly simple looking counters here artwork is is nothing special you got uh, silhouettes um, so they didn't do any sort of NATO kind of iconography these are but these are tactical games so uh, not surprising that they use um, silhouettes of your cav artillery. Um, it's like stars for your various leaders. So, so fairly nice looking counters aside from the aforementioned side mounting portableness. And maps. Ah, uh, yes, the Classic. I don't know how good of a, I don't know how well these colors will reproduce on camera here. Um, I'm using sort of late afternoon light. Um, I didn't want to flip my lights on inside here, my spotlights, because um, they tend to cast a sort of orangish hue over everything. So, um, as you can see here, classic uh, SPI era map, the lovely green with pink. Um, you know, you would think that. Uh, ridges and things, uh, hills would be shown with, you know, a brown or tan or something like that. But um, TSR thought better. Hey, what goes good with kind of a lime green color? How about uh, salmon pink? Yeah, good idea. Makes me think of uh, lime jello and ham salad. Just, just hideous. Um, so as you can see. Really good size maps here. I can't fold them all all the way out. Oh, and they're double sided. Now here, this has normal colors on it. This is Brandy Station map B. As you can see here, that's got. I mean, still it's orange and yellow next to the green, but uh, somehow less offensive to the senses than the pink. Um, so I'm not sure if. That's the pink and green side. Well, that's Trevelyan Station, so... I don't know if that's supposed to be the one that would marry up with the Terrible Swift Sword map or not. Um, because it looks like the Terrible Swift Sword map. Some of the other maps, this one is... Brandy Station Map C. And, uh... They, they did one thing they did keep in the old SPI style is the sort of gray uh, borders on these and the including the charts on the maps uh, very um, typical of the of the old SPI maps um, but here on this one again we've got some less offensive colors involved here just simple green yellow normal blue for the rivers. But again, on the other side, it is the pink and green monstrosity. So I'm guessing these other sides with the pink and green are the maps that would be used to mate up with the um, terrible Swiss sword maps. That, that's the only thing that I can think of why they would be, why there would be such vast uh, color differences on each side. Uh, which makes you wonder, um, you know, if, if TSR had to make these weird compromises color-wise, um, why they ever went with the pink and green to begin with, if they were clearly capable of making normal-looking colors uh, on their maps, um, even if those normal-looking colors are still a little bit garish, they're not as garish as the, the pink and green. So, um, so I'm not sure. Again, trying to find logic in what TSR, the decisions that TSR made um, with their SPI 
imprints uh, is difficult. <laughs> um, and then we got a counter tray and a couple of dice in the box. It's nice that you don't get counter trays too often anymore. Uh, so yeah, no um, no reference cards. So it's going to be probably what I'll end up doing is photocopying these charts stuck in the middle of the book um, onto some cardstock, and uh, voila, we've got got charts. Um, so that way I don't have to mangle the rule book trying to get to them. Uh, one of the other trademarks of the TSR. SPI era uh, is this kind of artwork on the cover and I think and I may be wrong here oh, this has illustrator here is Doug Chaffee but I swear on some of these titles maybe it was like Julius Caesar or something I could have sworn the art said Jeff Easley uh, who was an old D&D &D, D &D artist from way back but um, this style of artwork very kind of action oriented and I don't want to say cartoonish because it doesn't it's not it doesn't quite look cartoonish. The colors are sort of cartoonish, but the artwork itself is not really cartoonish. Um or, or it's bordering on cartoonish without quite getting there. Um you know, it's somewhere in between cartoonish artwork and like a, you know, Don Triani uh style artwork who's a guy that does a lot of military uh, artwork that I just love. Um but every TSR SPI title had this kind of work out of the Terrible Swift Sword Box has very similar style of artwork to it. Uh, the Julius Caesar one did. Um, uh, I'm just thinking of Civil War games or, or I guess Wellington's Victory, uh, another example of having this sort of, I don't know if you want to call it action-packed artwork, but uh, this this very, very, very different style of artwork than what you would see on um, just about any other war game. And I don't know if TSR thought for marketing reasons, hey, we want to catch people's attention, um, than the kind of, you know, scholarly looking, um, dry and dusty type artwork uh, that you would see in a lot of war games, which, uh, while I say dry and dusty, I mean, I, don't, I didn't dislike war game artwork, but it was certainly nothing in the in this range of, you know, explosions and charge and all that kind of kind of look to it. Um, I don't, it's some, some war games are noted for having kind of terrible artwork <laughs> because the artwork on the box was always sort of an afterthought for a lot of them. Um, you know, you've got Roger McGowan who's been around for, for decades and his artwork is very classic. Um, and so if you've got Roger McGowan doing your artwork, you're usually going to get something pretty, pretty good. Uh, not always, but pretty good, but usually. Um, but a lot of them, uh, it's just a sort of pasting together of imagery from, an, from a particular era, or it's a terrible computerized reproduction of some propaganda poster. Uh, you know, just lots of misfires on the artwork. And, you know, kind of as, as cartoonish as this looks, the quality of it is actually very good. Their, their composition is good. Um, their fonts and, and, uh, you know, quality of the layout and everything is very good on this, very professional looking. Um, so I, I will give TSR credit for that, that however cartoony they made their covers look, they looked very professional, which is something that not a lot of war game companies um, have been able to claim over the years. Uh, so, uh, you know, credit where credit is due in that regard. Anyway. That's what's in the box of Rebel Sabers. Um, I've never done just pure cavalry battles, uh, or, is, or never, never, not familiar with this particular system either, um, and representing just cavalry battles in the Civil War. So I actually kind of look forward to playing it. That was one of the main reasons I picked it up. Uh, I got it really cheap, because um, again, the TSR SPI titles you can usually find real good bargains on. Um, so if you do want, you know, an old SPI game, but don't want to pay big money for that soapbox. Um, you know, see if there's one of the TSR reprints out there, and you can at least get the system as it as it was. Um, even though you're going to get some components that are that are not quite as good. Um, but this one, you know, this doesn't bother me too much. Uh, the, the, I knew what the components would be getting into it, 
Um, but I am interested to try the system, so we'll see how it turns out.